very good morning to you all. Thank you so much for making time to join us at Fambies Africa. My name is John Matava, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about all about profitable ventures that can be done on a small piece of land uh, regarding our argument on mushroom farming. On the other side, I'm joined by one Wangari courier. Uh, thank you so much, Wangari. Glad to see you once again. Please, could you just start by telling us your name and what you do? Guys, <laughs> it's the farmer on fire. Thank you for joining me for another session of getting to know more about farming, where to know more about agriculture. And today we're going to discuss mushroom farming, which is my favorite, favorite thing to grow because um, it's just different. It's more interesting. It's more drama. It's not the same put in the soil water and wait for it to grow. This one is a bit twisted and uh, very lucrative. When you pack it, a small pack goes for premium money. So I'm excited to be here. I hope you guys uh, will stay on till the end of the video to learn more about farming opportunities that are there during this pandemic and also more about mushrooms. I have a recipe on my YouTube channel um, about how to cook mushrooms. So get there, learn one thing. I know you have the time, so why not learn how to cook mushrooms? And probably if you find it in the market, go try it today. Well, that's so great. And Wangari, now talking all about urban farming, there are so many options that one can go all about for urban farming. Uh, possibly we could just start by the mushroom farming. How did you start mushroom farming? Uh, uh, farming mushrooms from <laughs> from desperation. I didn't have any income. I had just been retrenched. I didn't have any capital and stuff like that. But then I figured, hey, this thing looks like it's doable. There was a church training um, in our church and we were shown how to do mushrooms. So I went home and I was like, I'm going to do this thing. So basically it was just building my own mud house. Like those ones for Shago, for Kitambo. And you guys know I'm a village girl at heart. I'm from Nyandara. So uh, I went and just put poles, one here there, made a rectangle and then put some mud on it, put some grass on the thatch roof. It basically didn't cost me any tangible cash. I just had to go to my neighbor who had destroyed his greenhouse and I asked him for some of his poles, which he gave freely to me, <laughs> the power of asking. And then the rest we did with one worker, which I had at the time. Um, yeah, so, and then we started with um, button mushroom, which were very lucrative and, the market was good, but now, right now, I do oyster mushroom, which is much easier. It's a breeze, and they they they, they come out so well, and I'm happy. Um, I also have a ready market for that because a lot of people, especially a lot of Kenyans of all social classes, <laughs> can eat oyster. But with button, is a bit bougie. It's a bit for those people in Westlands. And you guys know I'm in Kitengela, so the community is a bit challenging. So I prefer oyster because I can still do my fan gate prices or delivery. So great. Time. And now just on a mushroom, being a very delicate and a sensitive crop, how are you making sure that you can control the pest and diseases? So the first thing is hygiene. As we learned in science at a very early age, mushrooms are not, it's not a plant per se. You know how plants, I was teaching my son now that we've been forced to homeschool, <laughs> are the parts of a plant. So there's a flower, stem, leaves, nini. So with a mushroom, it doesn't have that. So that's why it's in a different section, which is called it's a fungi it means it doesn't have leaves it doesn't have those chlorophyll stuff so because of that it means that um if you make sure that you're observing a lot of hygiene you can be able to control pests very easily if you are able to contain the house and there are very few times, because they just want to stay in the cool. So unless you're harvesting or spring water, because they need a lot of water just to, to come out, you should make sure that no one is interfering with them. They like growing in the dark by themselves. So, so when it comes to hygiene, it's a very big factor. When you're putting the spawn, make sure that you clean your hands if you're using the toothpick make sure it's a clean toothpick um the grass you should make sure you boil it i tried some shortcuts here and there of using a disinfecting kind of alternatives where you use 
uh, maybe a sub, uh, you substitute the heating, but then I realized it's not sustainable because it doesn't kill everything. And then eventually that bad thing, even if it was a small pod, it grows out and spreads to the rest of the bag, which is not a good thing. But when you actually cook it, you cook the drum on <laughs> fire, firewood kind of jiko, and you cook it for two hours. When you start seeing the steam, put on the clock. You go do your thing. Come, You know how when we were growing up and your mom made you add firewood to the gedheri? Yes. <laughs> that was training on how to do mushrooms. So you come, add timber, add, add, add your firewood, go back, add. If you had put it at three, come back at five, remove the um, firewood, and then and then uh, you, you tilt the drum but don't open it, do not open it. So you tilt the drum and then you let the water drip out. Somehow it will drip out, but do not open it because you just want the straw. You don't want it to be that soggy. You just want it to be a little bit wet. So with, with that, it makes sure it kills germs, but do not open so that you're not re-exposing it to germs. And then you're putting it in polythene bags, in very hygienic places even the house should be very very clean wow that's so great and now wangari possibly you could just share the most possible challenges that one is going to encounter while farming this and how you've managed to solve them uh, so the first thing is <laughs> no money comes overnight i know you've read in the mainstream media how people are making half a million from mushrooms this is killer and so you quit your job and you go straight into mushroom farming, then it's a flop. Nothing comes easy. You have to work at it. It's still about consistency and persistence. Consistency, consistency. You know, before that farmer who's been featured in the Daily Nation became a millionaire from doing a farming project, they had been doing it for years. Baka, they got into the flow of doing that thing. And then now you're capturing a, a screenshot of that part of their life and saying you can make a no, it doesn't work like and i'm here to give you the truth guys it takes time be patient with yourself know that you are learning and then eventually after two three seasons that's when you really get to start having the hang of it so the first thing is get an expert to guide you and that expert should be someone who is already doing it. Don't get people in the office who call giving you stories. That's how farmers get conned. And we have too many stories of farmers get conned. Get an actual person who is actually doing it. Go to their farm, have evidence that they're actually doing it and doing it currently. They didn't do it kitambo, they are doing it currently. So get an expert to hold your hand in that. The other challenge is market. So there was that challenge with the competitor, the International Kigali Mushrooms, and they were really frustrating the farmers. But now mushroom is tip top. Yani, the demand cannot be met. The prices are very good. You take it to the market and within minutes, <laughs> yani, it's just people are grabbing it because especially people from the asian community really love them and they scout for them they know the benefits by there john i think we should discuss the benefits of mushroom just to to give a snippet so that also people are consumers we are not just producing to sell we are also producing to make our bodies healthy especially with this corona era you want to make your body stronger and how do you do that immunity you we might not understand what is the vaccine or the antivirus corona but we can do this we can make sure that you know how you build a wall around your house <laughs> and you put a gate and you buy a dog and you have a guard and you put lights that is how we can do from our end and there we have control so we can make sure that our bodies have the nutrients they need and the one thing about mushrooms they are very high in minerals minerals are not necessary in the major food groups but they help our bodies absorb those major nutrients if you don't have enough minerals you won't be able to to absorb any protein so you'll just be eating yama investing a lot of money in your fish investing a lot of money in, in rice and a lot of other things and then 
the body doesn't is not able to absorb it so that's the first benefit which i know is highly overlooked about mushroom the number two thing is that it's low in cholesterol so it is an ideal food and a good alternative for red meat number three is that it it is can be ground dried you dry it on a bag so also i should mention for those people who lack market because it's highly perishable uh you can put it on a black polythene bag or a black surface and you cut cut it and then put it there late in the sun and in the evening they should be crispy then after that you grind them you can use um this part of a blender that are short that we make with them peanut butter you can use that to ground it and then you, now you can use it to powder on your food on your kids food because it's still very healthy nutrients and you can even sell it as dried and it won't give you as much pressure of perishability so yeah it can be a good alternative for kids because kids you know they are fussy you need to actually be intentional about getting those nutrients in and that's one great way of doing it for me i really love them because i know mushrooms are an acquired taste and i have just programmed my mind that this is the most ideal i call it rich people food <laughs> and when you tell yourself that you get into this culture so you all the time you're just craving them it's, yes 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 you're just cra- craving it and so you go search for it and you make a meal so the other challenge that um to mention is that market perishability which i think i've handled the other thing is brokers those people that i called agents at the market those ones <laughs> yes but of course there is monolization you have to be taught the chills of the trade but just be aware that they are there and they are trying to get you at the lowest price be aware that they are there but they will try and demoralize you and demotivate you so that you can give them at the lowest price kangumu know that you can always display your wares there and they will still go <laughs> yes the other challenge is um, seed seed is very especially for button it can still fail uh for last year i mean many forums for mushrooms and the one constant was button is not selling why because there was too much heat that was going on it was during that time of drought and there were no rains so mushrooms like cool temperatures and when it's hot because you have to have a thermometer to make sure that the room temperature of the mushroom is at a constant 16 to 18 the maximum you can go is 20 if you in gear and you find it's 22 you need to pour as much water there you need to get those jets like the ones for extinguishers put on buildings and that kind of thing because temperature is a big issue for mushrooms why you find that the mushrooms in the countryside don't last for long it's cause of a temperature difference when it has rained there is a lot of humidity in the air the air is cool you know but then and also the timber they attach to is soggy and wet but after a while when the sun comes it dries up and it gets very hot so temperature is a big issue temperature is a big issue and and seed as well but the money is there if you could allow me to talk about the money cuz <laughs> i love that part money in the bank don't farm in bed you are not those people who didn't go to school you remember our school teachers used to tell us that you either can become a poet or you can become a farmer oh, yes. <laughs> toiling in the hot sun and, and so the pilot is flying in the air on top of you and you're saying do you know that plane is being <laughs> is being um what do you, is being flown by my classmates as if the teacher would know who is flying that plane you can still be a smart farmer you have everything you need in you to become a farmer because basically you are just a manager the rest god has already done you know it's just a matter of patience god has already made seeds in this world he has made soil he has you just are a manager and use technology and make that simple so for me money in the bank is a big issue uh for mushrooms it's good because you can be able to actually track because the fruiting season is very short so it's about a month or six weeks so you can be able to say 
today I produce three kilos. And a panet is 200 grams or 250 grams. That's about uh, 16 panets. And one panet is 200. So you, it's it's very easy to quantify compared to tomatoes where you are saying, I produced 15 crates, but five were not the right grade or two went to the chicken because they had some issues, you know. It, 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 there is a lot of fluctuations, but with mushrooms, it's the perfect product because 100% is good stuff and you can be able to quantify and say, I'm paying the worker this much, I'm doing this, this is going to this. It's ideal. And then also, uh, fans who really want to be serious with money in the bank, use a till number. Don't take cash and put it in your pocket. You'll end up using it on other things. Then when it's time to reinvest for the next season, you'll be stuck because you'll be like, huh, now I have to start figuring out afresh. Yet you could have used that money to plow into the new season. So get a till number. It has really helped me for my farming ventures because I used to feel like my money never is never you know, enough because you're feeling, I'm a new number, guy at 20. And now you are much for my eternal. But when you tell them, Eka kwa Mpesa, and transactions are free, now utawi ni your tinga, my your apartment, they are motivated, then they put their money, and eventually it becomes a lump sum. So, mushroom um, is a good way of doing it. Social media is big on advertisement, so put it in all groups. People envy mushrooms because they feel like it's something they can aspire to. And you just need to come up with a recipe and they'll be like, hmm, let me try it. And there'll be also a few people who are telling you, can you train me? I also want to make that money you're making. So it's an ideal product, I agree. Well, so Wangari, I would ask, which is the projected income profit uh, that one is going to expect if they venture into mushroom farming? Um, so for button, if you're doing 400 bags, you can project one bag should produce five kilos to six kilos in the season. And one kilo is about a thousand for baton. So if you multiply by 400, that can give you crazy money. For the oyster, they sell for 100 per 250 grams or 150. They are lower, but they're easier because they don't take as much time preparing. So for those ones, I'll give 100,000 every three months. And also 400,000 for the button if it's Wow, in. and now I would just like you to recommend to the farmers what they can exactly venture into in these hard times we are stricken by COVID-19. Any other option other than the mushroom farming? Um, so food, you never go wrong because at least people are still eating. Um, there is a challenge with bringing food. You know, most of our foods come from the countryside, yet Nairobi is locked. So um, mushroom is one of the ways because you can do it in the space that you're in. It doesn't need that. As I said, you can even use a spare bedroom. If you had a work a long time ago and you can still use that room to produce. The other thing is chicken. <laughs> you never go wrong with chicken. Egg production right now is huge business. Huge, huge business. So get those chicks and start rearing chickens today. Kienyeji chicken has become gold. Like people are looking for that authentic stuff because um, the fast food places in the CBD are no longer open, so the broilers are not as marketable right now. But the Kenyajis are flying off the shelves, so um, work on that. That can really be lucrative. Um, vegetables that's my thing, you never go wrong with vegetables, like even your neighbors, they will always come for vegetables, 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 vegetables. And for me, I have a project that I'm doing which is large scale, and I've just set the entire three cards on onions, onions only. Onions, if I project for you, if you allow me, uh, so if you approximate that you produce 8,000 kilos, that's eight tons from one acre. One acre is quite huge for onions because you pack them up, you pack them up like sardines, you pack them up. So you can produce um, eight to 10 tons, even higher, but eight is on the lower side. Eight, uh, so eight tons, so that's 8,000 kilos. 
and a kilo, let's say you're selling it for 40 shillings. Right now, I know it's going for 100, but we're talking about the, you know, you know, the lowest on the lower side. Because me, I like looking at the worst case scenario. In case it's higher, I won't shy away from more money. I'm just saying, when I'm doing my calculations, I'm looking at it from 40 shillings, 50 shillings. Uh, when you multiply that, you have your 400 per acre. Then you multiply by three. And it took you four months. So onions and tomatoes, you never go wrong. Because that's just ready market. Farming is, is, is very ideal right now. Because um, it's an essential area. So the government is not locking it down because it understands. So farming, farming, farming. Two, people need food. And the first thing I would say is onions and tomatoes. And then mushrooms, if you have limited space. Um, also strawberries uh, I've been giving out strawberries to some of my they had fans on my Facebook <laughs> on my Facebook and YouTube channel so if you have clicked uh, the subscribe button and you and you watched a few of my videos please let me know I'm sending out strawberry seedlings to people all around the country <laughs> and they are free so yes yeah, so get a potted plant and i'm also showing them how to do it in a potted plant you can just have a balcony you can still have you know you can still do it in a balcony you can still you know plants always have space in your house no matter how tiny your space is so you can do strawberries and once you do one and it thrives in a pot then you know that ah, i can scale this up and make it um, lucrative so please don't forget to check me on social media, Wangari Farmer on Fire, Wangari uh, the Farmer, Wangari Kudia. Those are all my names on social media. Please follow. You might get inspired and all of these days come for those, that money that we are making in farming. So thank you. Well, thank you. No, I think farmers are going to get motivated and start venturing into mushroom farming and other methods or other options of urban farming. So, Wangari, and this brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for making time to join us. We're going to host you once more again so that you may enlighten the farmers. This is Farm Africa. Thank you so much.